also sit in the same manner. The last thing I want to say, and the last, last one. I am completely, Mr. Speaker, touched by the speech of the minority leader, Senator James Orenko, and I wish he was here. As I said, Mr. Speaker, he played a role for me to serve in the task force on devolved government. And that's why I made a decision to run for Senate. And so even when I studied law, Senator James Orengo was one of the people that I looked up to. I am extremely impressed by what you said here. It is that kind of conviction, Mr. Speaker, that will help us to make decisions that are for posterity. It will help us, Mr. Speaker, to look even at the case of Wajia, not with the eyes that have concluded that the governor is guilty. Because some people walk to me, Mr. Speaker, and say, that guy is guilty, must go home. The people of Wajia have said he must go. That is not the duty of the people of Wajia. This house, like you communicated, Mr. Speaker, is for us to look at the facts. If the facts, Mr. Speaker, say we must convict, we must convict. Like the, it was said in the O.J. Simpson trial. If, Mr. Speaker, in the O.J. Simpson trial, the issue was whether the gloves that were found on the scene were actually for O.J. Simpson. And so at the trial, he was told to try the gloves. And, 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 and the gloves, Mr. Speaker, did not fit. And the court said, I mean, the, I think it was the lawyer who said, if it doesn't fit, acquit. You must acquit, Mr. Speaker. So it's our duty here to look at the facts, to look at the gloves, to look at the evidence, Mr. Speaker, and make a conclusion that will make the people of Kenya, the people of Wajia, the people of this republic, without, Mr. Speaker, preconceived positions that we have and prejudices, that, Mr. Speaker, we conduct a trial that will make everybody be proud of the Senate. Whatever the decision we make today, Mr. Speaker, it's in the best interest of this country. And, Mr. Speaker, I again conclude by saying the decision to bring the motion without the names, Mr. Speaker, is a genius decision. And, Mr. Speaker, if we decide to go for committee, we, we must sit down, sit back, and make a decision, Mr. Speaker, on how to constitute that committee for fairness and for the best interest of the country. And also to ensure those who have served in similar committees in the past, Mr. Speaker, can give way to others, Mr. Speaker, who've never served in similar committees. Mr. Speaker, that should be the principle that those who have not served in this committee are given an opportunity. Those who don't also perhaps hold the positions, Mr. Speaker, in the House get an opportunity to participate in such a committee. And uh, now that two others are coming, then we can share, Mr. Speaker, these people can go for this committee, others go for that committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Ochilo Ayako, by virtue. Senator Chilo Ayako. Senator Chilo. Uh, uh, okay. well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to address uh, the Senate on this matter um, virtually. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, one of the most important decisions that uh, the Senate has to make. Mr. Speaker, outside this chamber and inside this chamber, I've had uh, one or two or three of us uh, very skeptical about uh, either arrangement, whether it's uh, through committee or whether it's through plenary. And I think this kind of suspicion has been causing, you know, uh, deterioration of the image and uh, the standing of committee in the eyes of right-thinking members of society. Mr. Speaker, if we show ourselves that we have no faith, we have no belief in Senate by starting to undermine our own reputations, Mr. Speaker, it becomes problematic. Out there, we become bad marketers of our image we become bad marketers of our confidence. So, Mr. Speaker, I believe that whether it is committee or plenary, let us uh, give a good image to both the Senate collectively and to individual senators. There have been remarks made by ourselves on the floor of the House that undermine our dignities. There have been, uh, 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 some of us have uh, attributed bad faith uh, to members of this uh, August House, and I think it goes uh, a very long and deep way in terms of giving us a bad image. I believe that uh, a lot of work of Senate is uh, done through committees. I currently am chairing a committee. Mr. Speaker, you are chairing a liaison committee, and you are chairing the entire House. 
if we have belief and confidence uh, in ourselves individually and ourselves collectively, it would not be a problem uh, choosing the options that we prefer. I know for, one, I, I know for a fact as a lawyer that um, when you pursue this matter through a committee arrangement, there is normally uh, more time offered and more opportunity offered to both the person who has been brought before the Senate and to the Senate panelists who are investigating the matter at hand. So my preference would be committee it would be able to look at the matters on our behalf in a detailed and organized way. They would be able, all of us would be able, or the, or the committee on our behalf would be able to receive and uh, make rulings on objections, if any. But when the matter comes to plenary, it becomes restrictive. So, Mr. Speaker, I am in support of going the committee route. I'm in support of the fact that this is the time we need to rise to the occasion. And I think the Senate or the Senate is about the input, Senate is about the process, and the Senate is about the output. Uh, if the input is based on uh, evidentiary inquiry and the process is based on uh, fair and just disposition by ourselves, I believe we will come out with an output that is acceptable to both the Senate and the public. And that's what we need to do to preserve, defend, and protect the dignity of the House and also earn the title of honorable senators. I will support, uh, I will prefer and recommend and request uh, many of us to go the committee way and stop casting aspersions on the behavior of individuals because those aspersions also affect uh, how the public appreciates us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can see there is a lot of interest, so I'll give, I have to give everybody. Uh, a chance. I, I, I'll just give five minutes, then I'll reduce also the the number of uh, the people. S Senator Harugura. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to contribute to this motion on uh, which way the committee goes. As you have said very clearly, it's not the matter of the the substance of the motion of the impeachment itself, but it's the procedure. Mr. Speaker. Uh, our procedure and the standing order is clear which way to go, either plenary or committee. And also, we have seen that we borrowed from the Constitution on how to do it. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Senate has done it both ways. We have done the committee, we have done the plenary before. But uh, personally, somebody who even sat in the committee, the first one of Wambura, the, Wambura, the two of them, my problem, Senate works through committees and it's the effective way to work. But the problem I have is once the committee has done its work, because it was working for the Senate, then that report either way should be discussed by the Senate and voted on. The reason why of late there have been tendency of going to plenary is that Senate not being able to debate the report of the committee if it says that the charges have not been substantiated. And so long as we have that in our standing order, uh, which is uh, 54, uh, 75, 4A, then uh, we will not be able to, as, as a Senate, to do justice to what the committee has done. Because at the end of the day, that is a Senate decision. It's not a committee decision. So committees work for the Senate, but it's for the Senate to make the decision. So. So long as we have that clause there in our standing orders, Mr. Speaker, I'll like to go the plenary way until we amend our standing orders. We remove that clause, that, that section which says that uh, once the committee has found the issues not substantiated, then there is no further debate. Because that way, then it's like the committee will have usurped the powers of the Senate to make that ruling. And uh, for now, I think that is why there have been uh, move towards plenary of late because of that restriction. And it's a thing which we can see. If you look at this co the same constitution, that's why we are still now grappling here on the issue of what happens if a matter is brought to 